Hello, hello, and welcome back to Creatrix. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to take your business to the next level? Become more creative and stand out in your industry? Then you are at the right place because you are a unicorn. Stop acting like a workhorse. Today, our focus is on creativity and communication, specifically in your business with Dr. Stephen Zavallian. Welcome back again to Creatrix TV because we need more people in the world who are doing their work uniquely and can stand out and really shine their light with their purpose. So I'm your host, Kat Moulton, Transformational Catalyst and coach, and I support purpose-driven individuals to remember who they really are and take their life or business to the next level. Today's guest, as mentioned, Dr. Stephen Zavallian is the must-have branding specialist for you if you want to stand out in your industry and create a unique way to brand and become effectively more visible. Dr. Stephen Zavallian is a professional unicorn, and after losing his vision in graduate school, Stephen not only finished his degree, but went on to work in the clinic, start a business, write a book, and give a TEDx talk. In all of these ventures, Stephen presented creative approaches and unique aspects of communication to his audience. From role-playing in his TEDx talk to choosing your own adventure social media service series, Dr. Zavallian has excelled at unique and creative communication. He now helps entrepreneurs with creative communication in their business, which eliminates any chance of competition. Ooh, that's exciting. I need to know about that. So Dr. Steven, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I love it. I, I love that that was the title that we, that we chose to go with as well of the Unicorn versus Workhorse. Um, I think there's so much to it and people are just so afraid of, of being their unicorn. Now I understand some people might be dragons and other mythical creatures. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> but but I, I am personally a unicorn, so I tend to choose unicorn for myself. <laughs> oh, awesome. So why did you choose that for yourself? Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? I sure. Well, and so it was, it's a very interesting thing of, of actually the way our working culture is really. So I got my doctorate in physical therapy and you get into the clinic and I started working in a clinic. People don't know this, but physical therapists, even though we are doctors uh, now, it used to start out as a bachelor's, then master's. Now doctors, um, we're not always seen as the doctor. When people say the doctor, they mean MD. So now all of a sudden you really have to show up very, very well. And in this specific clinic at the series of clinics, we had to really dress up. They really forced you. You had to do a button down. You had to do a tie. Like you really had to dress the part of I am here. I'm this professional. And that really carried over with me even when I left the clinic and started my first business of Love to Move. Um, and that's where the, the TED Talk and the book and all those things came out. I all of a sudden was like, I still have to be very professional. And I was like, well, no, like it's your business. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And so by the time that I was thinking about this and I really got out of my shell and realized Professional looks very different in different settings. There's a different definition of this word professional. And I've always associated myself with this. Hey, I'm a unicorn. I have something different. I used to live in Nashville and I was one of the few people that like was in Nashville from Nashville. Everybody else oh, wow. moved there. And wow. so every, everybody kept on constantly using this word unicorn and saying that I, I would always kind of stand out in these unique ways. And I knew that I was battling professionally this idea of being professional. What, is, what does that word really mean? How do you show up and showcase yourself professional? And so I said, together, they really showcased well together of the professional unicorn. And that's why I said, okay, I'm, I'm now putting together me. And with this hard thing that I always struggle with is how do you show up professionally? And then that's how all that was born. That's awesome. And I, and you're like uniquely branding yourself as you do that. And then you can help other people. I love the word unicorn. It brings up a lot of different images and things. We won't get into that, but um, it makes it really fun and light. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, I have a list of questions, but when we talk about creativity, is fun a factor in that? Like, as opposed to that staunch professional that you were describing, like, so yes, yes and no in, in, in a way. So yes, fun, fun is a factor, but I, I think that creatives also can get mislabeled and it's like, oh, you just have fun all the time and you play all the time. And that's what being creative is like. And it may look like that to somebody who's on the complete other side of that going, 
you must be rigid, you must be structured. Um, but then, it, it, and it's a good mix of it because if you don't actually take the time to repeatedly practice and do things over and over and over again and become good at it, even art, and art is known for that, if artists don't just practice a lot, it doesn't matter how creative, quote unquote, you are. Um, a lot of us, uh, some of the great things is um, talent, uh, talent will never beat hard work if talent doesn't want to work hard. Um, mm. So, and that's, it's, it's true for anything. It's not that the, the best basketball players or whatever are not going to be creative. They're creative. They also mm -hmm. work really hard. Um, well, what does it do? Same thing in our businesses. It's yeah, you can be naturally talented at something, but if you don't really work hard at it as well, it doesn't matter how creative you might be. So yes, have fun. Yes, play. You can be on the other side of it all, uh, but you do need to give it some structure as well. Uh, and I needed to hear that. I, I like lack structure and I, I need that <laughs> for myself. I was good at giving it for my children, but not for myself. And that's a good reminder, though, to catapult or make our businesses unique. We need structure and we need consistency. You know, it's. Yeah. yeah. And, and the only thing that I would add is that you actually would that have a superpower because I'm sure there's people out there just like you that are going, but I just want to have fun. Like I have some you have this amazing amount of energy. And all that, all the other people that have a lot of structure, they're jealous of you because they're just going like, if we could just focus that energy, you would be unstoppable. Um, and so, so it's not as if we're trying to be like, be like them. No, 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 Just a little bit of structure. And oh my goodness, the amount of things that you could create and do would be amazing. That's all. No, that's awesome. And I appreciate that because energy is my jam. I talk about that all the time in a lot of different spaces, but we're here to talk about you today. Um, and I, I really want to highlight some of this because you know, in the coaching industry, for example, there are now a bazillion coaches, so it seems. And I've been in the industry off and on for a decade. And the more that come on, it's like, how can someone in that industry or in any industry really differentiate themselves and make themselves stand out, um, you know, and be look unique and offer like service? Like, what do you? Yeah. So the first thing, the first and easiest thing that anybody can do to stand out is to be themselves. The, before we get into that whole authenticity and um, aspect of it, when I say be themselves, I mean literally present pictures of yourselves, videos of yourselves, you, because nobody is really going to be able to copy you. And for mm -hmm. anybody that's going to go down the rabbit hole of AI and all that kind of, or just just you right, right now, we're not there yet. Let's just focus on this. The fact is that if somebody, if you put up, um, this is really easily seen on on social media, especially if somebody puts up an Instagram post that just has a quote on it and some nice colors. I can recreate that no problem. Mm -hmm. and you'll never know who it actually was. But if you put a picture of yourself on the Instagram post saying those things, I mean, I could recreate it, but it would still be a picture of you. Mm -hmm. I could never take that away and everybody would be like, well, who's, who's that picture of? Who is that? So all of a sudden now, and we don't think about that as standing out. It's not different, but that's a little bit of, oh, okay, this is now different. If I put a picture of me, it will look quite a bit different. It's a bit of a different mm -hmm. post. Okay. So then comes the piece of, okay, how do I stand out? You have to let people know who you are, not mm -hmm. who you think they want you to be, but who you actually are. And this is probably the hardest part because we're told so much of, uh, as entrepreneurs, find your target audience, figure out who it is. And it's, mm -hmm. and then they go, listen to what your target audience wants and give them that. Right. Especially if you're a coach, especially if you're a life coach, or uh, you can't change who you are to who your audience is. You have to show up and say, this is who I am, depending on who, what the audience is like, please come and join me. Mm -hmm. And the problem is too many coaches, when they go to show up, they go, I'm a life coach. And that's all the information they give you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to connect with that. I, right. I truly sometimes don't even know what a life coach is because that's such a big umbrella term. Mm -hmm. So what more do you do? And the story that I love with this is I met with this one uh, woman she, on a networking call. And she simply, she got on and she said, I'm a life coach, CBD advocate. I do horse therapy, yoga, mindfulness. Kind of your typical kind of slew of things. I'm like, I guess I know what you do. I don't really, mm -hmm. but there was something about her energy. And I thought, I want to book a one-on-one -on -one call. So I booked a one-on-one -on -one call with her. Before I got on the call, I checked out her LinkedIn. And it said, again, life coach, CBD advocate, horse therapy, yoga, meditation. I was like, okay, all right. We get on the call. I said, hey, great to connect again. I looked at your LinkedIn. Can you please tell me what it is that you do in a little more detail? She's like, sure. I'm a life coach, CBD, I have a yoga therapist, <laughs> uh, horse therapy. 
I'm going, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I read that. Could you go a little deeper? She goes, well, yes. Well, so we, um, I do meditation and mindfulness practices with my clients just trying to help them. And sometimes we also do yoga with horses. And I'm going, okay, so four times I've communicated with her in various different ways. And I have no further information about what she really does. But I love people. I think people are unique. And this is the part where um, people can really gather more from this and a really useful way to, to, to see how to, how to look ahead is, I said, okay, but who do you really connect with? Out of all of your clients, if you were like, hey, don't pay me, I just want to work with these people. And she said, you know, divorced women. Mm. And I said, why? Uh, it is, it's kind of, it, it was an immediate answer and it was so specific. And she said, I got divorced in my early 20s. And so if, if there are people that had a similar experience, I know how to use these things better to help them out. Okay. And so I said, okay, all right, but what, how do they feel afterwards? Do you know? And she goes, yeah, you know, they always, they feel, they say that three things, always the same three things. I feel calm, confident, and peaceful. Right. I said, okay, so then when you present yourself, when you go to these networking meetings, when you put stuff online, the presentation should simply be, I support and guide independent women to find calm, confidence, and peace in their hectic lives. Mm. You could say that you are, you are a life coach at the end if you really want to. You could say that you use CBD or yoga to do that that way. But then I understand, oh, I need to get you these kinds of women, women mm -hmm. that, that feel that it's, it's too chaotic. And so once we can break down why we do what we're doing and who we're really looking for, who are we, what is this community that we're trying to build, only then can we really kind of say that, that what it is that we're doing at the end. So that was a little bit of a longer answer, but that's, that's, that's okay. I love that because I'm getting tips from that. I have vacillated for myself, you know, mm -hmm. life coach versus specific things and play with it. And, you know, your point is well taken. It's, it's how can we share the outcome and the results that we get people as opposed to all the many titles. And you kind of seem like you help them really figure out who they are, what they do, how they serve, and then how they can package that. So the target audience response to it. Is that mm -hmm. accurate to say? Uh, th that is, that is absolutely accurate. And I just want to say that that we, we actually, I didn't work with her. That was just something we did in 30 minutes, um, over oh. a meeting. Yeah. Oh. Um, it was just one of those things where I'm like, it's, it, it can be that easy. Uh, even for listeners, it can be that simple of, Oh, let me just jot down kind of what I do. I, I think a good analogy for it is if you've ever gone to a specialist, um, um, uh, kind of doctor or anything like that, and you see all those letters after the name, you don't know what it means. And most likely your clients and your customers have no idea what all of those descriptions actually mean. And you're like, but look, I have all these credentials. They don't know what it means. So uh, you, you really do need to just explain it. All right. Well, I'm going to get better at explaining. I, I want to I ask you then, how can we, like, you touched on a little, is there a specific way to, once we know all that, to communicate it effectively or uniquely, like, um, succinctly maybe is the word i'm looking for actually that's a good word um so because succinctly is is something that uh it would be great for some people um okay. actually i would say it would be it would be great for most people since most people tend to talk too much um and they, and they can't really drill it down to what are the important parts that they need to cover okay. however some customers why don't you just talk and talk to them and talk and talk to them? Um, and that's the beauty of it is that when somebody tells you there's only one way to do it, they're wrong. Um, okay. And that's, that's the beauty of creativity. There is not one way. Um, however, there might be a better way than you're currently doing it um, that you mm. could think of it that way. There's probably always a slightly better way, but we're getting too close to perfectionism at that point. And I know how many people can be perfectionists. So, I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> Recovering. I somebody else said that they're recovering perfectionism. Recovering. Yeah, I, I I love that as a term. Um, so in terms of the communication, it has to be what do you like to do? Um, as as an easy way, if you're a coach and you're a life coach, you're probably going to have to talk mm -hmm. um, most of the time. And this is why so many people are are saying you have to be on video. You have to do videos on on social media. You don't have to. I have met plenty of successful coaches that they go, yeah, I don't really do videos on social media. Great. They've, they've built a community through maybe, it may be Facebook or newsletters or some other way. There, it is that route. It may be harder. And if you're a person that's very bubbly, has a wonderful personality and love being on camera, don't do newsletters. You're, you're wasting that ability to connect with people and that talent 
go and be on social media and communicate that way. Um, so unfortunately, what I'm really telling you is it depends on how you like to communicate. Okay. I think the biggest thing is that not to be pigeonholed into, I, uh, I've been told to do it this way. I don't like doing it this way. It doesn't feel like me. I'm staying in that part as opposed to finding what feels like you to be able to communicate. Mm. Is there a way when you work with people to, if, if they're not sure who they really are, like I, you talked about the communication part in the woman, but do you have any processes that um, you might use for people to peel back the layers of who they are at their core? Or do you send them to someone else to go figure that out and then come work with you? Like, how would that work? Uh, I usually can actually suss it out pretty well. Um, and it's honestly just through conversation. Uh, okay. and, and so if it's, because when, when I sit down and talk, I, I don't do sales calls. I've even done posts on this where I go like, I don't do sales calls. That's, it's silly because when you, so when you sit to me in, in my work, I, I get why people do sales okay. calls. Yeah. Um, but for me, I have to be able to know that you have something truly unique to communicate and you don't have to, this is the awesome part. You don't prove it to me. You don't sit there as an interview. And, I swear, I'm, I'm so unique. I'm so special. No, I just go, you're missing. You're missing how absolutely wonderful you are at saying this joke. And then people go, but, but my business is not about telling jokes. I'm like, but well, you are. You are. Jo- Why can't you be you in telling yeah. these jokes? So it's uh, a lot of it is is really finding who that person really is, and what are they afraid of showcasing? Not even necessarily Ooh. how it gets written, but what are they afraid of showcasing in their business? Okay. And it's making those two connection points. That's usually what it is. I'm not mm-hmm. teaching them how to communicate. I'm teaching them how to make that unique unicorn thing about themselves professional in their business and streamlining it so usually it comes out right away because people are people everybody has something unique it's just that we've been conditioned into this thing of where they're going oh i can't do that on camera or i can't say yeah. you can do whatever you want especially entrepreneurs it's your business you can do whatever you want um you've been just programmed to say that you can't why right so it's, it's really more of that than me teaching them and and they're learning how to speak or anything like that it's it's kind of breaking down those barriers really Okay. I think you just answered my next question about uh-huh. where is there a place for creativity in business? You just kind of summed it up for us. So, um, and it's taken me a long time to get to that point, to do what you said, like realize it's your own business. You're an entrepreneur and you can do really whatever you want. You don't have to do it everybody else's way. Because quite frankly, when I was doing it everybody else's way, I wasn't making any money. You know, mm. I was fitting into that box, ready to step out, the recovered perfectionist. So I love everything you shared about But one of the things that tripped me up for a long time was this branding thing. And so I wanted to ask you, why is branding a dirty word, right? Because some people just don't like that word. Maybe you can um, share some thoughts. Yeah, Uh, that's that's me included. I I, I don't like that word. And after I'll answer, but I also want to hear, I want to hear more of the story of like what what made you switch to be then yourself. Because I think that's also going to be beneficial to all the listeners. Um, If they've been with you for so long, they're going, what happened? How did it go? Because they know more about you than I do even, I'm sure at this point. Um, Hopefully they do. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason I don't like the word branding um, is simply because, and this, this is true for, there are many words out there similar to this, is as soon as you say branding, you get put into a box, you get put into a corner and people go, I know what branding is. Branding is colors and logos and fonts. Mm-hmm. And like branding has nothing to do with colors and logos and fonts. Mm-hmm. Um, colors and logos and fonts are ways to remind people of your branding. That's really what it is. And so people associate that that's what they have to do. And so what branding really is, so I always talk about that. I, I talk about three things, creativity, communication, and branding. Um, creativity, we've really touched on quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Communication is literally any way that you interact with another human being. Okay. In terms of business, emails, podcasts that you might be on, um, the way you're on sales calls, the way your website looks, the way you talk at networking meetings, every single way. It's not just speaking. It's any way. They're all communication. And what okay. branding then is, is how well are you able to take that creativity that you have, that wonderful uniqueness, put it into all these formats of communication and create this feeling around your company, around yourself. That is your brand. Mm-hmm. And so that is when, when people say, this is on brand, this is off brand. Really what they're saying is this aligns with the things I expect from this person, this company, or it doesn't. Um, and that's what, like the big brands, we already expect of it. Like if you saw a, a Netflix logo on like a Starbucks cup, all of a sudden you'd be mm-hmm. like, 
they must have partnered because obviously, of course, Netflix is not making coffee now. That would be off brand. That doesn't make sense right. uh, for, for, for any of it. There's something else that happened there. And so the brands have kind of, so then the question is, when people see your logo, what are they reminded of? If you're like, well, they're just reminded that it's my logo. You don't have a brand. That's, that's if a logo reminds of a logo, that's one. What is the feeling that they get? Um, and if the feeling mm. is that they have no idea what it is, again, you, and that's okay. Like we're building up the brand. So you have to know what are the feelings, what are the emotions, what are the, what's the general kind of atmosphere that you're building with your brand. And then all of that other stuff, the fonts, the colors, all of that, it's just reminding people of that. It's just bringing them back to, oh, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why so if, if I'm talking about creativity and, and I'm talking about being your unique self, but yet doing that in business, the professional unicorn aligns itself kind of with that, that whole idea. I like um, that. So. Yeah. I yeah. like that professional unicorn. I like that's going to stay with me for a long time now. And um, just that uniqueness that, and, and I appreciate that because I have struggled with that over the years and I'm sure many people do, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can help them and, you know, you're, you're just feeling real about it. That's what I like about you. You're, you know, you, you show up in that unique way. You're just yourself, but you, you also really listen to people. And I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, in just the short time I've gotten to know you, that makes you different from some of um, other people I've leaned on in the branding world. I mean, we haven't worked together, but to your point or your question, I was told for, you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. And, you know, your look, it really matters what you, how your logo looks and this and that, but you said it's how they feel when they see it. And, and that resonates because that's like the work I do with people is like, you know, that, that pinpointed question, how do you want to feel? And then how do you want to make other people feel? Because that to me brings in the humanity of it and partly this differentiating effect. And I wanted to ask you, there was a question um, because we've talked about human and uh, authenticity, one of my favorite things, but I talk a lot, not so much on the show, but in Clubhouse and other places about humanity. What's the difference to you between being authentic and human? Like, uh, yeah, and that's years. and this is just something that I, I've kind of uh, that's my my best differentiation. And it's because so many times I think we're now being hit over the head. And even when I started, I was like, oh, I'm going to teach people to be authentic in their business. And I realized that sentence is actually flawed. Um, we have this idea of be authentic, be you. It's thrown around everywhere, but we don't really think through of, OK, what does this actually mean in terms of business? Okay. Um, we tend to have examples like it's okay for a CEO to be like, I'm having a hard day, guys. I'm going to take it off. What that's okay for is for other people to go, oh my goodness, like they're not a machine. They have hard days. They're human. Really, what we're trying to showcase is they're human. If your CEO just every time they didn't feel like it just went off, you'd be like, you're not consistent. This is awful. I don't like this. Just because you don't want to do something doesn't mean you don't get to do your hard job. You were paying you a lot of money, do your hard job. So mm -hmm. we don't want true authenticity the way we say we want true authenticity okay. in business. Yeah. We, want, we want to see that they're human. Um, and so when when a lot of uh, marketing agencies and so forth, they, they tell their clients, showcase that you're authentic. Mm -hmm. They're really saying showcase that you're human and have people be able to connect mm -hmm. with you. That um, even if you are some sort of a company that makes furniture, you're not the furniture. You're the people that make the furniture. And that's what people are going to connect with and have a relationship with. Um, but they're going to be upset if you're going like, yeah, you know, I just take, I just took a week off and your order is going to be late by a week because it just kind of felt like it. Nobody's going to be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's, that's fine. I know you promised me, but that's, that's fine. As in terms of branding. And so for me, that's kind of that difference between true authenticity and humanity. We should absolutely mm -hmm. showcase that we're human because humans connect to humans and mm -hmm. people buy from people. Even if you're um, a B2B company, if you're, even if you're a company that buys from other companies, you're still a human talking to another human at that company. And in the end, it is still going to be humans buying from humans um, in that sense. So humanity over just like that true authenticity. That's that's the difference for me. So I'm going to throw you another a, a, a question. Because yeah. I, I love that. And one of my concerns, I love the age of AI. We are moving mm -hmm. into that at warp speed, right? How do we keep the humanity in that then? You know, that... If we have to know, like, and trust someone to buy from them and we want this human piece, how do we keep the humanity? So this is, 
very, very interesting and very fun because of, because exactly what you said, how fast it's progressing and it's going. Because people right now are going, oh my goodness, Chad GPT or this AI tool. Is, guys, it's this is nothing compared to where it's going. This it's it is going to go very, very far. And it's unfortunate that it's taking away from so many um, artists and creative um, kind of jobs. I recently heard a, a part where AI is taking away from modeling, like from models, because. Okay. Um, the, the, the reason is you can just have the final thing and you can have AI create the perfect model that you want on the picture and then put the dress, the picture of the dress on there. You no longer need an actual human model to wear the dress because a lot of those runways, they were just there to create pictures. So mm -hmm. if I was to give one little uh, lesson from that, it's not that no job is safe. I, mean, I don't want people to jump to that. It's not that. It's the output of the modeling industry was mm -hmm. pictures and videos. Right. And if pictures and videos are the output of your industry, AI can already do that. So you're kind of going like, oh, AI is going to replace replace that and that and the people that are working to create those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So the thing that AI cannot replace, um, and I think won't replace for a long time, is creativity, because all of those things, and I hate to make it about myself, but it just it is true. All of the inputs require you to be creative. Most of the people using Chad GPT use very, they just ask it questions or they just say, write this for me. And then it's the, the, the really like the 10 or probably even the 1% of the people that are using it to the insane ability that are getting way, way, way ahead mm -hmm. of these crazy prompts. Um, and so as AI develops, it's going to be more about how can we get creative in implementing AI in our systems and businesses and in our lives, as opposed to saying, no, 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 I'm unique. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a big part of it. And I, I've really, I heard, uh, it's kind of like the internet. Like we can think of AI as the internet when it was starting out. Mm -hmm. Now we're thinking a business without internet, that's ridiculous. What, what do you mean? It's going to get to the point where a business that doesn't use AI, what do you mean? That's kind of silly. Um, but having said all of that, I will say that my prediction is that in the future, there's going to be this big swing away from uh, digital presence for many people because now you're having these things like deep fakes where you can recreate the entire person. It's very expensive right now. I think the last number I heard was something like a thousand dollars a second or something for a video. Oh, wow. or, I might be even uh, even shorter. Might not even be a second. But uh -huh. so you know, movie production companies might be able to do it and things like that. But it, it does cost quite a bit. Um, but you can't make somebody up and per right now we don't we don't have hologram technology to the point where if i say hey we're going to show up for a coffee or i'm going to do this live event in person you cannot use ai to do something that like you cannot fake me um there and so that right now i think it's it's going to come to the point where there that's going to be highly valued because all of a sudden you can be uh truthfully you, you can know for a fact that is that person there and i can connect with them um, so to sum up all, all of that is that, first of all, you're not going to get away from AI, but use creativity to properly use AI. It's just a tool, just like everything mm -hmm. else. And don't okay. be afraid that it's going to replace you because it, it cannot yet replace a human uh, as long as you do human things. Um, so and then finally, yeah, eventually just just be more human, I think, is what it's coming down to my entire message. <laughs> I love that. I really like be more human because so many of us are not not that we're like AI, but this, that perfectionist thing that you talked about mm -hmm. or, or brought up, like, or the people pleaser that I was, or, you know, we're, we're, it's not real. Like, how can we bring this realness of who we are and this energy to it? And my big takeaway from your ramble is that I got to keep practicing speaking so that I can be in front of people. So they know that I'm not this like fake image that I'm mm -hmm. the real deal. So um, thank you for that. And that leads me to like, I, I, we may have touched on it a little already and you did in this way, but how do we really stand out from all the competition, like, or eliminate the competition in whatever industry we're in? Is there more you can share on that? Yes. Um, I actually, I want to share, I gave, I gave a presentation. I had so many wonderful stories in this presentation. And the big takeaway was this little exercise that I'm going to share with you. I okay. afterwards asked for feedback and probably 60% of people said that little exercise. And I went, Okay, not the creative hard work I put into everything else. Fine. Huh? I'm not what a hard So here's the and this is um you can use you can further use this for um your websites and all of that, but really one of the most useful things is for networking events or when you get to meet people. Mm -hmm. And when people ask you one of those that that fun question of, so what do you do? Um 
And what usually ends up happening, the way that we usually answer is something along the lines of what it is that we do, who we are, and then why we do it. That's the order that we usually tell people in. Um, I'll get on a little rant about who in a little, in a little bit, but um, I, I'll use kind of an example of whatever, like um, I am a life coach. I help people, like I, I help people improve their, improve their lives and I do it because I love helping people. Okay, very, very, very bad kind of a thing. So what I say is flip it. Okay. Tell people why you do it first, who you are, and then and only then what it is that you actually do. And so in that case, even if I take that bare bone thing of I'm a life coach, um, you know, like I, I, wor I work with, with people and I, I help people and I like helping people uh, because it brings me joy. If I say I like helping people, it brings me joy. I tend to work with people mm -hmm. and I am a life coach. It sounds already a little bit better because you could connect with the why in that case. So we start with the why and why do you do what you do? Because that's the part that people are actually going to connect with immediately. And they're going, oh, okay, I can understand that. Then you go to the who. The who, and this is where I love people go, oh, it's my name and my business. Not really. Uh, because your name and your business are great, but who is really more, what's the community of people that you're looking for? Mm. Uh, who, are the, who are the people that are your kind of people that are going to go, oh, yeah, that's who you are. That's who the brand is and who you're looking to, what community you're looking to build. And only at the end, you kind of do, okay, this is what we do. Uh, we might do life coaching services. We might do financial services, if you really want to put the, those buzzwords in. But it's once you kind of, I hate using this word, but once you've hooked the people in, and once that you actually, you've piqued their interest, you've made them go, oh. Because the, the biggest thing we want to avoid, and this is going all the way back when we talked about that life coach example that I said, and we rearranged it. Uh -huh. You want to avoid that word that's going to force your listener to put you into a box and think they figured you out and know exactly what you're doing. You want to keep that word at least until the very, very, very end so that they can listen through. So then if we start with, I'm a life coach, people immediately put you in a box and think, I know what a life coach is. Mm -hmm. As opposed to if you start with your unique specific why, most likely nobody else is going to have it. And now this is the next piece. So the exercise is tell people why. Tell people who you are and what the type of people, not who you're looking for, because then that sounds salesy. And then mm -hmm. what you do. The next piece is people get very generic with this. So get fine-tuned with that why part. Don't just say, I like helping people. Um, in general, avoid the word help just because it's so overused. Mm -hmm. I prefer using words like support, guide, assist, empower, inspire. Those are all examples of help. Mm -hmm. But now people go, oh, you inspire women to be leaders. Well, that's different mm -hmm. than help women be leaders. I see help all the time. How is this? How does she inspire? Right? What, what is that different power or, or empower? Whatever, whatever fits better yeah. to your specific thing that you might do. And then make sure that it's filled with your passion and truly filled in with your passion. Um, I think that's the other part is that people are afraid to say no to potential clients. Um, because they, and so they think everybody's a potential client and in that way they say no to everybody. Um, and it's so, uh, so many people go, I, I forget on what show I was, but somebody was saying like, t tell us, tell us what it is that, that, that's like important in marketing. I said, figure out who you don't want to work with. Mm. Um, because, and I really don't want to work with it because there might be a, per a person that fits really well into your exact criteria, but you're going, I hate the way they say the word water. I don't know. I'm just making this up. <laughs> Not be the best client room then. Like, so what, what, what are those things? Get down to that nitty and gritty. And I, I think you will also, um, your listeners will understand this because you, you talk about this idea. Like you will manifest, you will get that the energy yeah. will come and the people will come your way. There's 8 billion right. people. There are people out there for you just because the person right in front of you is not the right person does not mean that there are not others. So we went kind of, all around the circle, uh, but it's yeah, okay. that'll be the way to, to really stand out because nobody can answer those questions in the ways that you're going to answer them. Well, I appreciate your answer on many levels because probably the next few episodes I do, I'm going to change my speak in the beginning to the why, who, and the what, and try it out. The same thing it might be in meetings because they're getting kind of vanilla and they're getting kind of boring, and I'm going to switch it up and see, you know, the best Thing, at least in the work I do is feedback, right? So we mm -hmm. try these things and see how people respond. So one, I'm going to implement that exercise. Thank you for sharing. Um, 
and I'm losing my train of thought, but the, um, I don't know, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm gonna, it's gonna yeah. circle back, I apologize. But um, what else can you tell us on this topic that you know we might not have covered that you really wanna communicate to people to help them stand out in their business, to be more creative, communicative, just to really be that unique unicorn in their own industry? Like, I have, well, one, I have a little demo. Two, um, guys, I'm not picking a cat, but she was just being human. She was just being human. She forgot something. And it's okay. These are beautiful eyes. She was human. That's the perfect example. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, yes. sometimes I'm going to tell you, I'm going to write a book someday. It's called Queen of Mistakes because I've made them all. The older I get, I forget things that are like right there, you know, just the mom brain. And I'm just going to just learn to roll with it. But mm -hmm. I wasn't always that way. You know, it would, yeah, it would shut me down. So thanks for the kudos. But so what do you, what, what yeah. is it that you might want to share? And I'm glad that you said that it took time because all this stuff takes time. So the other, the other part that inevitably happens um, with these things is whenever, uh, whenever people say I can't really be myself, a lot of it comes actually from imposter syndrome because they go, mm -hmm. I have to do it like everybody else does it because, well, that's how they do it. And so that's, that's what I'm seeking to do. Um, and that's fine if you are literally seeking to be like that very, like you're looking at the, the very best person in that industry and you're going, I want exactly what they have. And if you're just going, I want money, that person has money. That's very vague. Like you, you could go around. So in terms of imposter syndrome, this is something that I, this is a little visual aid that I like to use for imposter syndrome. And it uses a, uses some cards. I like to use the king of spades as um, kind of, right. so th this, this is the, the main person where you're going, oh my goodness, this is the expert in my industry. They know everything. They are so smart. In any room, they are the guy everybody listens to. Or gal, of course. But in this case, it's the king. We're going with that. So in that same room, there might be a jack. And the jack obviously listens to the king. He's going, yep, mm -hmm. that's definitely there. And then in that same room, you've got a third person. In this case, it's the 10 for the people listening. I'm not going to be mean. Just <laughs> you're not, if you're not watching and just listening. But so you've got all these people and they're all saying, well, obviously the king is the highest. He, know, he knows everything. And then you walk in, your little little tiny seven of, of hearts. And you're going, I have no idea what these people are talking about. They're talking about spades. And it's just, they're so much more important and better than I am. And then this room brings up a question about hearts. And all of these spades are going, we have no idea. We don't, we don't know anything about this. Mm. This measly seven you, all of a sudden, because it's about hearts, trumps even the king. Because Ooh. you become that matter expert in that room about that thing because you know the most. Mm -hmm. So even though you are a seven of hearts and you're not the king of hearts or the ace of hearts in that room, you are the most important person for that topic. And so that's, that is that, that big takeaway of you find that thing that you truly know the most in and you're not an imposter. You know that's the most. Cool. That's That's yeah. Good feedback, even for myself, as I listen to you and shift the way I do things. Um, yeah, that that's good. And I love that you mentioned heart because that is one of my specialties, the energy of the heart. So it just aligns. Um, okay. If someone has worked then with a branding person in the past and mm -hmm. you know they've been listening to you and they kind of like your vibe or your energy because like I really do I, I align with it I think you're awesome um is there anything else that makes you stand out from other people they may have worked with especially if they haven't had success or someone tried to put them in a box like what can they expect from you what can they um you know feel from you that can support them not help them support them inspire <laughs> them you know <laughs> I, love it. I do try I, to listen. <laughs> no, you're great. That was fantastic. Um, and implement. See, that's the other part. Is a lot of people listen, but they don't. They don't implement. Most people, I would say. Yeah. I think it's. You see the you saw the face, and it's not just because it's not at herself. It's also at her clients. <laughs> we all know. You know who you are. Um, I, I don't know. So you can you can definitely expect to a degree the unexpected, um, okay. meaning that I am not going to treat you like every single other client, um, in the sense of I will treat you as your unique self, okay. um, because it it is true. So um, I'll probably do be doing a whole lot more listening um, than talking uh, the, the first part uh, because okay. that is that is wildly important. And the reason I say that as an important bit is 
if you go into a brand, I don't care if you work with me or don't work with me. I just care that your amazing message gets out there. That's all that, that that's important to me. And if you're able to communicate it in the way you want to communicate it. If you work with a branding specialist, marketing specialist, any of those things, and you go in and they immediately, the first thing they do is they start telling you how you need to be doing things without hearing anything from you really. Mm-hmm. Run, run. That's because what they're going to do to you is they're going to take your, your brand, you're feeling everything. They're going to put it into a template and all of a sudden you're going to look just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and templates, I understand templates are efficient, but templates make you look just like every other person using that template. So you have to adjust and do things a little bit differently. And so whenever we work with people, it has to be different um, for, for different people. So in a, inevitably, every session with a client is going to be a little bit different because of what do we work on? How do we work on? Um, how do I make golf funny? I don't know. I have to figure it out. Um, that, that's, that's my job is to figure out how do I make that part um, into it. This is not a client of mine, but this is a beautiful representation of something like this. One of my business coach's clients, I will even say his name. His name is John Nemo. Um, this is the client's name. Um, because he's such a character to this point that John Nemo has become synonymous with like, oh, that was really John Nemo. Uh, he, uh, he wears just t-shirts and, uh, and gym shorts for every single meeting, every single w- whatever. He has, I'm going to mess this up. I'm not going to name the sports team because I can't remember the sports team. But he has some giant sports team cup. And he just, that's how he does his Zoom calls. That's how he does sometimes his Zoom calls from bed, business Zoom calls, all these things. That's his brand. Um, he d- tells a bunch of dad jokes. He laughs really hard at his own dad jokes. And it's fantastic. He's happy being himself in that way. And so it, there's no way that I can work with him the same exact way that I might be able to work with, <laughs> with someone like you, Kat, right? Um, in, in that way. So yes, I've, I've rambled sufficiently, but I think what's expected is that we're going to, we, I'm like saying, we're going to take a different approach with you. We literally have to take a different approach with you because it can't look like anybody else's stuff. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that you, you have that vision for people because, you know, I, I, had, last year I did a bunch of um, calls with people, you know, potential coaches for myself, like in mm-hmm. business and other things. They're like, you cannot use the word creatrix. I'm like, too late. No, no one knows what that means. Blah, 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 blah. You have to do that. I'm like, you're not the coach for me. I don't care. This word has resonated for a, de- for a decade. You know, and I, I've done earlier episodes on what I think that or what it feels like for me. And I'm going to bring that back. But I'm just like, life is too short. And I'm just going to do it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if I can find ways to make it more unique, because everyone's like, you should use goddess. I'm like, you know what? I loved your card exercise because creatrix trumps goddess just saying you know it brings in the creativity it brings in that goddess energy it brings in the mother energy it brings in source energy it brings it all in and Mm -hmm. I do want to inspire people and I I have some coffee that I've used I'm just going to share this with you yeah Um, and I called myself a muse because I inspire beauty and art because I know that's the portal to the quantum field you know or one of them and people are like, you can't say that. But like after talking to you, I'm like, I'm going to start saying that a little bit more because yeah. why not? And um, so I, I just, I really appreciate your authenticity, your humanity, your your laughter and your smile um, and, you know, what you do for people. And, and I appreciate your time. If people are intrigued by your work, where can they find you? I, so all over social medias and everywhere, Stefan Stephen, Stephen. Zavalin. Uh, all those are handles, stephanzavlin.com. That's that's where you can find me. Um, and I, I do a lot of social media stuff and it looks about as ridiculous as you've, you've generally seen here. And it, just one tiny final thought, because you said it, um, is when people go, don't do it, you have to ask why not. Um, and I, I think that was the, the, the Muse example is absolutely perfect. The only thing that I'll say is sometimes I've had people tell me that the reason they picked the name is because they were like, I put it into an SEO finder and that was the best thing. And I'm like, that's a terrible reason to have a brand name. Um, the it. Muse saying because it resonates with me, it's so much better. So I love it. Keep saying you're the Muse. It's 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 your business. You've got this. Well, you know what? Because part of my why I'm going to tell you, and if I lead with that, it's on my YouTube channel, but I'm not really, it's not, it's like, I'm going to create a more be- or help curate a more beautiful world. That is why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. And then, but people are like, what's that mean? I'm like, you know what? You're not my people then, or you're just not ready for me. I just, because you said it, not everybody is your client. And 
when I was, I did real estate for a little while and, and I started to learn that in that business. When somebody drains your energy, this might not be worth your time or the money, um, depending on where you're at or what your perspective is. And the other day I did a, um, a, a sales call, if you will, for mm -hmm. my business. And as soon as the person came on, I was like, no way, I'm not working with them. I didn't say that to them, but I could feel it in the energy that it was going to drain me. And I gave them the time and the courtesy and we had a conversation and we just weren't a good fit, you know, and that's okay. And I think mm -hmm. that that's important to know because when our energy is drained, we don't show up in our business and our life, you know, quite the way we want to, or that attracts or manifests right people. So um, I appreciate this conversation today. Thank you. Um, any special offers for our listeners or. Absolutely. Um, I think there will be a link, but uh, I am happy, yes, I am happy to have a 30 minute chat, at which point I will not try to sell you. Um, and, and I hope you will not try to sell me. Um, but <laughs> the whole purpose is it's a free 30 minute chat where we get to talk about you and figuring out we can work through the, the, the why, who, what part. We can literally just figure out what is your unicorn? What is that, that unique self? We can just talk. I'm, that's, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, whatever, whatever else. we can discuss what, what we think cat means by creating a beautiful world and what a beautiful world means for us. We can have that 30 minute chat and it will be absolutely lovely. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. I hope people will reach out to you and then, um, you know, you sound like you're a really good listener as well and creative ideas. I will put that in the show notes. I will have it on the blurb. Um, I, you know, where people can find you and on some of the social media posts, um, so yeah, I, I really appreciate your time, presence, and energy today, um, Stephen, and everyone else who's been watching. If you've lasted for the whole hour, we appreciate your time, presence, energy. We look forward to seeing you next time so we can help catapult your business and your life and transform anything that you want to do and also help curate a more beautiful world. Bye-bye for now.